Let's create our own instance of GitLab Enterprise Edition on our own self-hosted server. To start out, well, we need a server to put it on. I'm not going to put it on one of these two. I want to put it on a new one. So I'm going to provision a new server. And I'm just going to check Hetzner. And for your server plan, one thing to consider if you do want to self-host your own GitLab EE Enterprise Edition on your own server is that you need a pretty beefy surfer in order to run GitLab EE without coming across a bunch of lag issues, without a bunch of user experience issues. You really need a beefy server. If you put it on one of these cheap ones, it's just not going to work that well and you'll probably end up removing it and not using it. So what I'm going to do is provision a bit of a beefier one. Uh, this one of four CPUs will probably be the minimum I want. So I'm going to select that. And for server type, I'm going to click on this because we do not want to use most of these pre-configured ones. For GitLab EE, we do not want Nginx to be on the server because it's going to conflict with GitLab Enterprise Edition. So we're going to scroll down and click on the plain server which only includes a, a couple of the basic services, but no Nginx, that way it's not gonna interfere with our GitLab EE edition. And let's change the server name. Let's go ahead and call that GitLab EE. Make it nice and easy. There we go, and let's provision the server. While this server is provisioning, there's one thing that we could do in the meantime which is we want to create a, a URL, a domain, and point it to the server. So we could see that while it's provisioning, it already has a IP assigned to it. Let's copy that to the clipboard, and I'm going to go over to my DNS section here. So let's go ahead and modify lean branch. We'll just create an A record for this. So I'm going to add a new A record and call this Skitlab, and then point it to that new server that's provisioning, and click on Add. And we'll see that new record here. And that's all we need to do for DNS. So now this gitlab.leanbranch.com should be pointing to the server. And I expect by the time the server has finished provisioning, this will have propagated out. So we should be good to go for adding SSL to it. Okay, looks like the server has finished provisioning. Let's go ahead and click into GitLab EE into our server and go to the services section. So we can see that most things have not installed on this particular server. We do see that Fildeban, Firewall, SSH, as a minimum, have been installed, but no Nginx, which again is a good thing because that will conflict with GitLab. And to install GitLab, all we have to do is simply click on Install Service, and then find GitLab EE in the dropdown, and then put in your domain. So if you remember, we created GitLab and then dot lean branch. Com. So for password, you'll want to notice what it is. This is just a randomly created password. Uh, but if you want to use something else, you can feel free to change it. I'm going to make it easy for me and just type in password for this demonstration. And you'll want this password because it's going to be the password for your default admin account where the username will default as root, as you can see in the note below. And then the password will be whatever is provided here, either by the system or what you enter in. And let's click on install and that's going to go through the process of installing GitLab EE on your server. It is a, a little bit of a lengthy process so we'll just wait here for a couple minutes for it to install. Awesome, it looks like GitLab EE has finished installing. It took maybe five, six minutes in this case. So again, it's going to be a lengthy installation process. Let's make sure we could access the site. We'll do that in a new tab. And it looks like it does come up here when we go to gitlab.leanbranch.com and our username, we'll log in real quick, our username defaults to root and password is what you entered when you created it. Again, for me, I put in password and let's sign it. All right, this is great. And we can also see that SSL was applied to the site with that little security icon that you can see right here in the URL. Well, since we're here, we might as well add a new project real quick. And after I add a new project, I'll show you how to create a VC profile and link over to your GitLab EE uh, domain. So I'm just going to create a quick one here. How about create link new project? And for this, I'll call it static. It's just going to be a quick little static site. And let's create that. And let's add a new file real quick. index.html and let's put the basic tags in here. I think we just need HTML 
And then I'll say, hello, everyone. And then let's close that HTML tag out. Okay, looks good. And let's save it, commit the changes. All right, I see my index.html and the readme. Let's now create an API key that we'll need for Cleaver. To get there, click on your avatar in the top right, and then click on Edit Profile. Then on this left row right here, click on Access Tokens. And let's see, we'll want to give this a name. Let's call it Cleaver. We'll leave the expiration date open. That way it doesn't expire, but you could add it there if you want it to expire. And then I think uh, API and read repository, write repository. I believe those are all that you need. Let's go ahead and create this access token and it will appear right here. So I'm gonna click on the copy button and then go back into Cleaver and then go into the connection profile section and then click on version control and then we'll add a new VC profile and then select self-hosted GitLab and then give it a name, call it GitLab EE and then add your personal token, and then the base URL for your GitLab site, which is for me, HTTPS. And what was that? It was gitlab.leanbranch.com. And then click on add. All right, let's give this the real test. Let's go ahead and go to one of our servers. I'm just gonna use this, my Oracle Cloud server, remember, uh, GitLab EE is just hosting my GitLab instance, so I'm not going to use that really for new sites. What I'm going to use is one of my other servers here, and then I'll create a new one. Uh, let's just make this a static site since that's what I created in GitLab, and I'll just use a free domain and click on Add. All right, once that's ready, click on Setup and Deploy. It's going to take you to the web app section for the web app that was created after creating the new site. And then let's see here, we'll click on GitLab EE and we'll see that loads for a little bit where you could add the repository now. Let's just start typing in static and we'll see that pop up there. Okay, it looks like it's not master, it's main. Let's correct that and then update and then go back and deploy. All right, it says it's been deployed. Let's visit the site and boom. Hello everyone. 